modern technology has been identified as a key enabler for the growth and development of emerging African securities markets. But how could these technologies be onboarded through necessary investment windows and opportunities? That was the focus of this high-level panel of tech and market experts. Let's take a listen. So tell us, what emerging technologies do you see having the greatest potential uh, to transform the investment landscape in the next five to 10 years? Uh, tell me what is the most used buzzword these days in technology? Here you are. Everyone from a, a junior school uh, student to the presidents of the countries, they are involved in that discussion, AI and all that. So that is, that is technology buzzwords, but in reality, one has to be very mindful of the undercurrents uh, of those technologies which are going to hit you if you don't um, understand what is coming up in the next cycle of technology and if you don't address it right now or equip yourself or enable yourself as, as what's going to happen. I can tell you, um, AI is one thing, of course, AI has been there for ages. It is just the word that people have, uh, have adapted, whereas people have forgotten the, the opposite of it, which is natural stupidity. So, <laughs> so as opposed to artificial intelligence. Uh, but yeah, these, these technologies are real and they are coming up fast. And it depends on how you actually capitalize, how you monetize on that. For example, a uh, few years from now, uh, the entire backend plumbing would probably be built on metaverse, for example. Uh, as Donald uh, rightly said that the consumer need ease of transaction and economy in the transaction. That's it. And we have seen in, in not in the ages, in the last few years that happening, that businesses are being gamified in such a simple way. Uh, Uber, Airbnb, Amazon, e-commerce, uh, lending platforms now emerging locally. Those are global, but locally there are solutions. Mpasa has evolved into a fantastic uh, game changer at that time because they, they captured that moment, that technology at the right time and hit the consumer's um, dopamine uh, requirement, uh, so to say. So that is going to happen to every business. So emerging technologies is, is, a, is a jungle out there, I tell you. But my take is that build your business models, simplify them, and then translate that and use technology as an enabler. Don't really expect technology to solve your problems of thinking also. The intent here is to improve uh, decision making and portfolio management. Um, there's an author called Kentaro Toyama. I often uh, refer to his quote that technology amplifies human intent. And so when we look at this and seeing that our intent is to use AI and machine learning to uh, improve investment decision making um, and then also to help us with portfolio management, it helps us to really orient ourselves around the um, good use of AI for um, for 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 us, uh, the way uh, Nasser Nasir has uh, sort of really um, contextualized. So that's number one, and um, specifically when it comes to improving uh, decision making, I think the first opportunity uh, is to understand our customers and to understand our clients better. Um, the you know I don't know how many of you have. Uh, either TikTok or have children who are on TikTok, or if, you're, if you have used any sort of um, social media platform, there is what the algorithm shows you, right? 
And the thing is, behind that, there's a large language model that is continually learning um, about each and every person and each and every interaction that is happening on that platform goes to train that model so that when it, it spits out a recommendation for a video or a recommendation for a friend request or a recommendation for something else, it is based on that machine learning, right? So the question here is, uh, actually the opportunity is uh, for us uh, in, the, um, in the private sector to look at how we are using customer data to train our models so that we can um, really provide helpful, useful information to enable them to make the next best action that is useful, that brings them constructive value and actually helps them to grow. Um, our chief uh, of business development and strategy, Mutiga, mentioned that uh, Safaricom is about financial inclusion. It's about transforming people's lives. And uh, we have the honor um, of uh, using these technologies, including AI and machine learning, to orient it towards transformation and actual constructive um, value. The issue of cryptocurrencies um the way it affects the strategies of investments and so on, uh, it will depend on how we, we are ready to adapt it. From the regulatory point of view, uh, it depends on how people uh, uh, embrace it and, and, and learn to live with it because it's here to stay. So um, it's another asset class which can bring value. Um, if we, we do it the right way. I've had a lot of um, jargon today um, about investments and what to expect for the future. But for us, uh, as regulators, we, we must adapt to it. Uh, as investors and strategies for investment, we learn um, how to adapt, of course, uh, ourselves, our strategies, but not looking at, uh, for example, the cryptocurrencies, the way we look at them, um, they, they, they are not an end in itself. It's a currency at the end of the day. But what we use it for and how we adapt to what it can do, but in the world of uh, efficiency and, uh, and, and, and um, how do I put it, uh, and adaptability. So that's precisely what I'm going to talk about. Today is related to big data and analytics. Today it is going to be, just to give a perspective as to what is this industry all about, big data and analytics today is a $25 billion industry worldwide and it's growing so fast, it's predicted that it'll be at least an $80 billion industry by around 2030. So that means there's a lot of things going around big data and analytics. So what, how does it impact investment? Moment you talk about investment, you cannot have investment without a regulator because that is never heard of. And if you have a regulator, if you have investments, you need to have risk management. If you have to have a regulator, risk management, then you have to have compliance. So I'll talk about all these things in a perspective. I think uh, you need to give me extra time for that. <laughs> yeah. So uh, just talk about from a perspective of investment management, there is huge amount of potential as far as big data is concerned. Primarily, precisely the same example what Donald mentioned, if you are able to seamlessly go through tons and tons of data, it can be unstructured data, it can be structured data, semi-structured data. Today, whatever comes out of Twitter or whatever comes out of you know the social media, there's huge amount of data, huge amount of learnings where you can learn from any organization or any financial institutions can benefit out of it. Just to give a simple example, uh, we talk about data being the new oil. Like, you know, today data is the new oil in the digital space, primarily because oil was the driving force of the industrial revolution. Today for the digital revolution, you need data. So the problem with data and oil is that data as such or oils as such is not very much useful. You need to do the refining, refining of the data. Same is with the data as well. So you need to do the refining of data. That's what all big data analytics is all about. You need to refine data, tons and tons of data, and then extract meaningful insights out of this and make it useful. And how do you make it useful for the entire community? So that's where the whole thing all about. If you talk about investments, industry per se, take a simple example. If I have uh, uh, data insights on the demographics, on the market segmentation, on, on a various asset classes, what is successful, not successful, 
I think we have got a, we can have all sorts of uh, 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 conducive environment for launching new products, which can be which can be accepted very well by the markets. Uh, that is one area. I can also do my marketing communications very well if I have meaningful data with me as to when to when do I release this communication, what should be the pattern, whom should it be addressed to. So that is one part of it as far as marketing is concerned. In terms of risk management, if you look at data analytics, you have various types of data analytics in terms of, you know, you have uh, uh, what is known as uh, uh, predictive analytics where you can predict, for example, in the case of investments, you can, if you can predict losses for for a, with a reasonable amount of accuracy, I mean that itself is a very big advantage for us in terms of investments. So predictive analytics is going to give a play a very important role as far as investment management is concerned. Uh, so that also deals with the risk management because with risk management you are talking about losses, you are talking about uh, uh, you know estimating the losses and things like that. So uh, big data analytics is goes in a big way because it uses statistics and a lot of modeling techniques to ensure that you know how do you do proper risk management. It also has got a lot of uh, talking about exchange space because the, I mean everybody here represents various exchanges and clearing corporations. Exchanges and clearing corporations by virtue of the business, they have tons and tons of data. And it is to, up to the exchanges to ensure that you utilize this data to come up with meaningful this thing. You have various problems. I mean which exchange and which clearing corporation does not have problems. Everybody has got problems. Problems of liquidity, problems of very, very many other things. Like. So it is important that we analyze this data. Uh, a simple example is in terms of uh, uh, what has been happening is you analyze historical data, but by the time you analyze this historical data is too late, too late to react. So what happens in big data analytics is you have real time data or near real time data where you can analyze and ensure that you come up with a lot of insightful uh, thing which can be useful for the markets. Like So uh, especially in the area of surveillance for exchanges, it's extremely critical. And to ensure that you know you have uh, there is no systemic uh, uh, systemic failure in the markets, so big data analytics is a very big plays a very big role in this area as well. So surveillance is one area where you can embed big data analytics solutions into this thing. Then uh, yeah, so that that encompasses the entire area. In fact, you can talk lots about uh, the, wherever this can be applicable. But I think these are some of the flavors as to where it can be applied. Again. I think um, in very simple terms, capital market exists. Uh, capital markets exist to connect capital to enterprise. So um, when we speak about the technology coming in, let's look at the context. Let's look at the continental context. Um, uh, 44 million SMEs, for example, according to data. Um, 1.3 billion population. Um, we are looking at a three trillion uh, dollar economy uh, consolidated in Africa. And uh, we are looking at 94 uh, value chains in terms of uh, economic activity. Mm -hmm.